a green line, which is the energy availability factor, and that describes how much of ESCOM's total capacity is available for generation at any given moment. And we see that this uh, capacity has dropped from 85% in 2011 down to 63% now. Hello, David Ansari here of the Center for Risk Analysis. We at the CRA release new videos every weekday morning at 7 a.m. So if you like this content, please do hit the subscribe button as well as the bell icon to be notified of all of our future updates. In this morning's video, we share with you an extract from an exclusive client webinar presented by CRA Director John Endres. Here, John explains why we at the CRA are skeptical of the claim that Mr. Ramaphosa is a reformist. We also examine the effect that this is having on South Africa's energy supply and the causes of the load shedding that we have experienced this week. If you enjoy this analysis and would like to know more about the CRA, please click on the link to our website in the description below, as well as to our free trial, which will enable you to access all of our content for free for 30 days. Enjoy. Right, so we've looked at the politics now um, and we've argued from various angles that there's a case to be made for the uh, ANC to drop below 50. We look at the economy now, um, and as we said, saw earlier, the ANC support levels sort of fluctuate in, in lockstep with the economy. At the moment, uh, the economy is not particularly strong. We are going to take a look at what the prospects are for reform and for turning the ship around, should we expect uh, something like that to happen, which could also allow the ANC to reverse the trend and increase its share of the vote. Okay, we start looking by uh, structural constraints on growth. So the question is um, that we're trying to answer here is, President Ramaphosa a reformer? And should we expect reforms to come? So is, 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 there, is there something in the pipeline that we can look forward to that's really going to, to, to change things quite considerably? We think the answer is no, and we'll give you some data points to support that. The first one is uh, a counter argument to the argument that the president simply uh, does not have the ability to act because the balance of forces is against him. Uh, and our measure here was a, a mini referendum on the president's uh, power within his party, which was the vote in parliament on the decision to investigate the public protector's uh, suitability for office. So the president wanted her to be investigated. That was Camp uh, Cyril Ramaphosa, Camp CR. But there are also parts of his party that would prefer her not to be investigated and for her to continue in office until she uh, nears the end of her term. And what we see here is that quite a considerable uh, majority of ANC MPs, 168 of them, voted in favor of investigating the public protector, thereby aligning with the president. Uh, a further 62 ANC MPs uh, hid under their desks or were absent from parliament on the day, <laughs> so they were not able to uh, vote in support of the, the president's motion uh, very conveniently. And we could even add the EFF uh, MPs to that as well, who also were against the uh, public protector being investigated. But what this shows us is that the, uh, that, uh, the president does have a firm grip on power within his party, um, but uh, he chooses not to exercise it. The second data point is that we look at the National Executive Committee, that's the top leadership of the ANC, and we went through the 80 ordinary members one by one by one, uh, looked them up in the media and tried to figure out whether they were clean or not, uh, and this finding is dramatic because 41 members over half are implicated in serious corruption. And, and what that means is that if they were investigated and prosecuted, we think they could <coughs> with hefty jail sentences. Uh, 31 members we weren't able to establish one way or the other, and eight we think are clean. But what this shows you is that uh, we will probably wait a long time for serious moves to be made against corruption in South Africa uh, at the top echelons of the ANC, because that would uh, cause such uh, chaos and devastation within the leadership of the party that it is simply unpalatable. Enjoying this analysis? Click here to sign up for our 30-day free trial for more content from the CIA. And what we see instead is a, a lot of uh, heat and light being generated 
around president, former president Zuma and about around Ace Mahashulu, and he gets chased around the countryside. And we see uh, a lot being made of these initiatives, but they usually sort of peter out with, with very little result. Um, and I think this is a pattern we're going to see continuing. So we want, the ANC wants the perception to be created that it is doing something about corruption, but there will be little actual action. The third data point is looking at the cabinet. And here we looked at the ministers in the president's cabinet and try to assess how many of them uh, could be considered to be reformers. And reform, we, we mean something different here to what the ANC means when it talks about reform. Uh, we, we think that you're not going to turn around the economy unless you really introduce sweeping labor market reforms, uh, take a look at the bargaining councils, allow private voluntary contract, uh, and you replace BE with a socioeconomic based empowerment policy. And you, of course, also need to protect property rights. So these are uh, very dramatic uh, and in many ways unpalatable reforms that are needed. Those types of reforms, um, we see precisely zero cabinet members <laughs> in favor of. Uh, we see 81 who are, so this is 81% of the cabinet who are actively anti reform. So they will go further down the road of, of uh, undermining property rights uh, and restricting uh, business and being anti-investment, et cetera, et cetera, and 19% who are possibly open to reform. But looking at this picture, um, we think that it is not likely that we're going to see any dramatic turnaround in the short term. The section we're in at the moment is the structural uh, economic factors and the, the possibility of reform. So we've looked at the political factors that tell us that reform is not coming. We now look at the energy sector and ESCOM. And what you're looking at here is, a, just now you'll be seeing two lines appear. A green line, which is the energy availability factor, and that describes how much of ESCOM's total capacity is available for generation at any given moment. And we see that this uh, capacity has dropped from 85% in 2011 down to 63% now, it's a dramatic decline. And largely that is explained by the red line, which is the unplanned outage factor. And that is simply the amount of plant that is unable to produce electricity because it has broken down um, or failed to work in some way. And that line has increased quite dramatically from 6% to 23%. Uh, and as long as we've got this constraint on electricity production as a result of uh, old equipment and equipment breakdowns, we think there's a cap on economic growth of around 1%, uh, 1.5% 1 that we'll battle to break through. We also think that this capacity can't be expanded in the short term, at least not by ESCOM. Um, the only way to break through this bottleneck would be to bring the private sector on board uh, in, a, in a very dramatic fashion to open up the generating uh, power generating sector to private competition and allow it to add the capacity that ESCOM, uh, due to its constraints, cannot add at the moment. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this analysis, please do give this video a like. Also, leave your comments in the comment section below. And if you would like to arrange a client briefing with John Andrews, please do click on the link in the description below, and we'd be happy to share our offering with you. My name is David Ansara. This is the CRA. Until next time, take care.